समान भाव मार्यंथमीशमजरमरमात्मदेव हंसानन प्रबल पंच विनोदशील संभाव मनसी शंकर आई मेडिटेट ऑन शिव द लॉर्ड ऑफ अंबिका Parvati, auspicious from beginning to end, unparalleled, the noble Lord, the unaging and the undying, the Lord of all Atmans, the five-faced dispeller of the five powerful sins. Vyasa said, Sages of edified souls, engaged in truthful rites, powerful and blessed, performed a great sacrifice at the confluence of Ganga and Kalindi, Jamuna, in the most sacred city of Prayag, a great holy center, a path that leads to Brahmaloka. On hearing that a sacrifice was being performed there, the great sage Sutta, the disciple of Vyasa, an excellent scholar in the Puranas, arrived there to see the sages. The sages were delighted on seeing Sutta and received him with due hospitality and adoration. The worship being completed, the noble sages, being highly pleased, addressed him in all humility with their palms joined in reverence. O Romaharshana, the omniscient, by thy weighty fortune, the entire Puranic lore, pregnant in its meaningful content, has been secured by thee from Vyasa. Hence thou art the abode of wonder-inspiring lore, even as the vast ocean is the storehouse of gems of great worth. There is nothing in the three worlds, past, present, and the future, that is unknown to thee. It is our great fortune that thou hast come to pay us a visit. Hence it is proper on thy part to do us a favor before returning. It is true that we have already listened to the explanation of the auspicious and the inauspicious, but we are not content. We yearn to hear more and more. Now, O Sutta of pure mind, we have one point to be clarified. If thou desire to bless us, please explain the same, though it be the secret of secrets. At the advent of the terrible age of Kali, men have become devoid of merits. They are engaged in evil ways of life. They have turned their faces from truthful avocations. They are engaged in calumniating others. They covet other men's wealth. Their attention is diverted to other men's wives. Injuring others has become their chief aim. Deluded as they are, they view the physical body as the self. They are atheists of mere brutish sense. They hate their parents. Their wives are goddesses unto them. They are slaves to lust. So-called brahmanas in the clutches of greed sell the Vedas for a livelihood. They acquire learning only for earning money. They are deluded by false pride. They have forsaken the duties of their own caste. They have become swindlers. They do not offer sandhya prayers thrice a day. They are deprived of Vedic enlightenment. They are ruthless. They make much of their little knowledge. They have discarded their rights and good conduct of life. 
They have taken to business as their profession. Cruelty has become second nature to them. Their minds have become dirty and defiled. Similarly, the Kshatriyas have also discarded their duties. They associate with evil men. They indulge in sinful activities. Vice and debauchery have become their main aim in life. They have ceased to be valorous. They never take interest in virtuous warfare. Indeed, they flee from the battlefield. They follow the mean tactics of thieves and shudras. They are mentally enslaved by base passions. They have become unqualified for the use of miraculous Vedic weapons. They never care to protect cows and brahmanas. They no longer consider protecting those who seek refuge in them their duty. They always indulge in brutish sexual dalliance with their damsels. They have thrown overboard the good virtue of protecting their subjects. They strictly adhere to sensual enjoyment. They are wicked annihilators of their own people. They rejoice in the harassment of all living beings. Vaishas, too, no longer perform holy rites. They have cast off their traditional virtue. They have taken to crooked ways to earn more and more. They are now notorious for their cheating practices in business. They are no longer devoted to preceptors, gods, and brahmanas. Their intellect has become distorted, miserly, and tight-fisted. They no longer feed the brahmanas. They take delight in being the paramours of beautiful women, squalid and filthy in their ideas and deluded by cupidity. They have lost clear thinking. They have abandoned their zeal for purta and other holy rites, such as feeding sadhus, digging wells and tanks, planting trees and parks. Similarly, most of the shudras have become depraved. Some of them try to imitate brahmanas with fancy robes and features. They, too, in confusion, have abandoned their traditional practices. In their eagerness to appropriate brahminical splendor, they try to perform penances, but they simply cause infantile and premature deaths by unauthorized chanting of mantras. They pretentiously worship the Shalagram stone. They evince some interest in homas, too. But in their thoughts and actions, they are crooked and antagonistic. They insult the actual brahmanas. Rich people indulge in misdeeds. So-called learned people take perpetual delight in speculation and disputation. Those who expound virtuous rites of worship and conduct discourses in holy scriptures themselves abandon the virtuous practices taught in them. Haughty persons assume the features of noble kings. Those who give charity do so with a lot of fuss and pride, thinking themselves to be great lords and treating brahmanas and others as their servants. Devoid of the strict observance of their traditional duties and virtues, the foolish people have brought about an admixture of castes, Cruel in heart and obsessed by false prestige, people have discarded the fourfold system of social classification. Deluded people, wrongly considering themselves high born, try to perform Vedic rites, resulting only in the upset of the caste order and downfall of all people. Women, too, generally misbehave and err, they slight their husbands. They are inimical to their fathers-in-law. Fearlessly, they pursue nefarious activities. They indulge in foul, coquettish gestures. They are carried away by amorous dispositions. Their conduct and dress resemble prostitutes. They turn away from their own husbands to pursue illicit connections with paramours. As for sons, they are invariably wicked, without any filial affection. They take lessons in ignorant activities and succumb to various ailments. O Sutta, how can these deluded people who have abandoned their traditional virtues get salvation here and hereafter? Hence, our minds are always agitated. 
Indeed, there is no virtue equal to helping others. Since thou art conversant with the essentials of all tenets, please tell us the easiest remedy for the immediate destruction of the sins of these people, the denizens of Kali Yuga. Vyasa said, On hearing these words of the sages of sanctified souls, Sutta thought of Shiva and told them thus.